Um, so you're giving the talk on a anastomotic leaks is kind of like winning the CME equivalent of the booby prize. Um, somebody's got to do it, but you know, I think that each of us have such an experience in training and in our early careers with anastomotic leaks that I'm not really sure that I have anything new to tell you. And so in giving this talk, I kind of feel a little bit like Elizabeth Taylor's seventh husband on their wedding night. I know what to do, I know how to do it, I'm just not quite sure how to make it seem new and fresh. Um, but I, I have to try, so here we go. Um, I have no disclosures. So first, how are we going to define what an anastomotic leak is? Uh, this is a definition from a pretty important article in the anastomotic leak literature. Breakdown of a colonic anastomosis associated with an intra-abdominal collection identified either by contrast radiographs before a subsequent operation or by the surge at the time of subsequent operation. Presence of leakage signs and confirmed by diagnostic workup. There is no universally accepted definition of an asthmatic leak at any site. The definitions and values used to measure an asthmatic failure vary extensively. And then there's this one. It's ironic, uh, Kyle, that you used the same quote today, um, which is, I know it when I see it. This is a quote that applies to obscenity, but I, I think that we all know what we're talking about when we're talking about an asthmatic leak. So despite the fact there is no accepted definition, I think we all know what we're talking about here. The rates of a clinically significant anastomotic leak vary widely, but in general, these are the numbers that I give patients when I'm doing the preoperative informed consent. For small bowel to small bowel and ileocolic anastomoses, I usually quote about a 1 or a 2 percent leak rate. Colocolics, I'll quote a 2, perhaps up to 5 percent leak rate. And colorectal anastomoses, really the most important aspect that governs the estimated risk of leak would be the height within the rectum of your anastomosis. Upper rectal anastomoses, 5 to 7 percent. As you move lower, much higher. And therein lies the justification for a potential preoperative or intraoperative diversion. Now, th this talk is on management of leaks. I think it would be much more fun to talk about steps you can take to prevent leaks. But I'm going to focus the content of the talk entirely on what you do when a patient in front of you may or may not be leaking. And I think that the the best defense is a good offense in this situation. I think early diagnosis, early action is critical to prevent your patient's morbidity from progressing. What are the kind of things that we can look at to determine whether or not a patient might be leaking? We all have heard these since we're medical students, so I'll try to touch on a few things that perhaps may not be obvious. Pain, tenors, peritonitis, feculent drainage from a tube is generally a pretty good sign that something's leaking. Sepsis, fever, tachycardia. Physical exam, I think, is underrated, um, including a digital rectal exam for a patient who may have a low anastomosis.